moving on to what is now the Xeon build, I have my new motherboard. And it's pretty good. I take I haven't powered it up yet, but taking a look at it, it looks like a fairly decent board, just like most super micro boards. Uh, this particular one is the X7DCA-L. Uh, this is the older board I had that I had my dual 5450 quad-core CPUs in. Obviously, I've moved them over to this because I'm going to sell this guy. Uh, these boards are very similar, although uh, this one's obviously larger because it has more PCI slots. This one loses some of the PCI slots, but... Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, but it gains a 16x slot, which, you know, this board costs 35 bucks. The difference in price of, like, it's more annoying to get an 8x video card, so I figure it ends up saving a bit of money just by getting a board. It's cheaper to buy a new board with a 16x slot so I can use any card rather than trying to use the 8x slots. So, you know, that's, that, that's my logic, and I've already ordered a... Um, GTX 275 from Amazon of all places and I should get that in a few days and you know it's not a new card but it it'll run in Mac OS so it'll be good enough for the Hackintosh build I'm going for so the main difference between these two boards other than the size is that this board uses the I think it's the 50 or 5000 series chipset and this one uses the 5100 series chipset and that means this board uses fully buffered DIMMs, which are these uh, memory sticks which have a controller on them. They create a lot of heat. There's some latency, but you know it's not really a problem for um, what I'm doing. But uh, they have the advantage of being able to have a fair amount of memory. The downside is that they create a lot of heat. These things get up to 70 degrees Celsius with a fan on them. Like on them, sitting directly on them, they get up to 70 degrees, which is just absolutely insane. So this particular board uses registered DDR2 memory. Registered means that it's got some additional driver circuitry on it. It's kind of like a scaled down version of what this does, but basically it has some like, uh, you can think of it as like almost like a booster circuit, so it can handle more memory. It can handle more of a load on the memory controller. So, despite the fact that these both have six slots, this maxes out at 24 gigs. This maxes out at 64 gigs, I think. So, you get a much larger memory capacity on this model. And uh, this one, like I said, uses so much power that I just, yeah, I didn't feel right using it. One of the reasons why I got this board is because uh, it's called a micro ATX case or uh, board, which it's not. I mean, you can see that it's clearly the same size as an ATX board. So, you know, one of the thing reasons was because I got it, and this board has this metal plate underneath it that interfered with my case, so I'd have to Dremel out part of the case. Well, I have to do the same thing on this one. Not a big deal. It's just a little annoying. So, yeah, this one's going to require a mod to my case. It's okay. It's a cheap case. It's the Corsair 100R, which is like... 20 bucks after rebate, so I don't mind dremeling off some metal on it. It's just kind of annoying. And unfortunately, this one didn't come with a plate, so I don't know if I'm going to bother. It may be worth it to try and track down a plate for this one, just because then I can resell it with the plate. If I can get one for like five bucks or something, I might just buy it because uh, one, I'd feel kind of bad selling this where it has to go into a super micro case or else it won't work. Because you can't even attach the heat sinks. They don't screw into anything. They just sit here and they're supposed to screw into that bottom plate or the chassis. So, yeah, I'm kind of stuck doing that. So, we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll, I, may, I may have to get another back plate if I can find one for a few bucks. But other than that, these share many similar features. They both have the six serial ATA slots or uh, ports. They both have parallel ATA. They both have, you know, your usual USB and crappy onboard video. They both have dual onboard Intel NICs. The, one of the big differences on this board is that it's supposed to come with audio, but this particular one doesn't have it added. Uh, it's not a big deal since, uh, you know, adding audio to a board is pretty easy with just a USB thing. I don't need fancy audio on this thing. 
This one also has two internal USB ports, which are useful for having uh, USB sticks for booting. Uh, I'm not going to use that, but you know, it's just a, a nice feature in general. And uh, yeah, the main the main difference between these two boards, other than the size, is that this one has the DDR2 memory, and uh, sorry, the registered DDR2 memory. So you know, if we just take a look at the board, it's uh, I've got my two uh, 5450s in there, U5450s. It's got power supply circuitry, uh, the two voltage regulator modules and stuff for the uh, CPUs, main chipset, south bridge, and you've got. 16x and I think this is an 8x and a 4x even though they're in 8x slots and a 32-bit PCI slot which probably won't get used and that's about it you know it's just a, a decent board from Supermicro so I've got the system built now I've got the two fans and heat sinks on I've got some memory installed I think it's in the right slot unfortunately this memory has to be installed in pairs like most uh, dual CPU system so uh, I do have an extra stick of or a couple sticks of memory this is a two gig and a half gig stick but since I don't have duplicates of them I'm stuck with just two two gig sticks and these are ECC registered DDR2 5300 they should be enough and I've got my little bench power supply hooked up and a USB stick containing the BIOS update just in case I need it so let's see if this thing works alright it seems to be in oh. Oh, I don't think it likes the memory. Hang on. Okay, looked up the manual. Uh, 1A, 1B. That's the order you have to install them in. And... No bad beeps. Do we have video? These systems often take a little while to start displaying video, so it may take a moment. There we go. Okay, so let me restart. You can hear the fans power down as the uh, fan management kicked in. But let me uh, just restart and go into the BIOS. Boy, this system's pulling so much. It's pulling half the power. At least doing this. I mean, it's pulling 100 watts. Or uh, around, uh, between 100 and 120. The, uh, the other motherboard was pulling 200. Okay, let's see if this goes into the BIOS. Okay. So we're in BIOS. Doesn't say. I'm going to have to spot it when it starts up. Let me just make sure we're going to boot off the USB stick. And just take a quick peek in here, see if there's anything of interest in here. Oh, I should go to the hardware monitor. Sounds like one of the fans is uh, making a little bit of noise. Huh. I'll have to look into that. CPUs are in good shape, and there's no fan control, I don't think. Oh, okay, here we go. I want four-pin workstation. Let's do. Uh, I'll just. We'll just keep it on work. Four-pin workstation. That should give it uh, some speed control. And make sure our AHCI is enabled, blah, 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 blah. Alright. So, let's restart, see if we can see the... I might have to restart a couple times to see the uh, BIOS configuration, or version number. Okay, I think we're on an older version. I think it said 1.0C or something along those lines. The current version is 1.2A. So I'm going to discard the changes. Yeah, it's detecting everything. All right, and we will run run the BIOS update. This is the nicer Phoenix Flash system. The uh, AMI one is just a DOS program. It barely even tells you anything. This has the nice, fancy progress bars and stuff. But yeah, they're basically the same thing. It'll take a few minutes, so I think we'll just skip that.
Well, the BIOS uh, startup has changed. It certainly looks different. Yep, checksum is bad. We all know that. Load defaults. And now let's try booting into Windows just for the hell of it. Uh, I am going to take a look at this fan because I noticed that this fan, I don't know if it shows up, but let's see if it does. It's making almost like a rubbing sound and I can see a little pattern on this when it does it. So I don't know, this, this is the newer fan, this thing should be working fine. But this is a very rigid frame, so I'm not really sure why this would be making a little sound. But I mean, it could be some problem with the uh, the signal it's sending. It could be sending a uh, weird PWM signal. In fact, if I go into the hardware monitor configuration, let's uh, change this to super quiet and exit, and see if it's still making this little weird vibration after the long post time. This thing takes so long to show up at all, like uh, on a reboot the before it posts and shows you the uh, BIOS information. It's a very long delay. Uh, it, a lot of super micro boards and uh, just workstation boards in general have that it do, due to stuff like the memory testing and other strange stuff. Wow. <laughs> that is quite the difference in sound, but it doesn't seem to be making the same sound. Maybe it always did that on full power, and it's just it's never really run it on full power. So uh, let's try hooking up an SSD and booting into Windows. Surprisingly, it booted right into it. So, oh crap, I don't have a mouse plugged in. Hang on. Okay, so it's detecting all the cores, all eight of them and we will run Cinebench and see what kind of results we get just for fun. Uh, with the fan speed so low I might get a very hindered performance. I don't know if it's going to override the fan speed and run it quicker as the uh, task speeds up but we'll, we'll see. It may, it may just run at a very throttled speed due to the heat. Temperatures rising to 60 degrees on that first core around 65 degrees on that second chip. It's completing the task fairly quickly. We'll see what the different chipset and memory, how that affects this because uh, the other system when I tested it had I believe 20 gigs of memory installed so it had a huge advantage over the 4 gigs of memory installed on this machine but that's the fully buffered memory which has those latency issues that I mentioned so we'll see if this actually uh, can outperform it. oh and it beat it ever so slightly 631 versus 624 so this thing is slightly quicker almost matching my wife's uh, modern Haswell 4690k overclocked chip uh, this this test is very very multi-processor uh, where so um, the reason why her modern chip which is not only just faster outright but just an all around better chip the reason why it matches it almost is that uh, this has eight cores and it has four so it's able to take advantage of all those cores and really run it if you're running like a single threaded app her chip would just absolutely destroy this thing but uh, when it's when it's able to use all eight cores properly it actually does uh, have quite a bit of power and that's what I want it for. I want it for rendering and stuff uh, probably using Final Cut Pro. So uh, yeah, that's not bad. 